So Halloween in this time of year in October is a time when people often use candles. And so we have here a nice Halloween candle which we can light. And I've always been taught to do experiments in duplicates, so I have another candle here as well. And the chemistry of candles is really very interesting. It's, um, in fact, the very famous scientist Michael Faraday wrote a whole book called The Chemical History of the Candle. Here's a J <coughs> Japanese version of the same book. A bit smaller, but just the same. We take the um, fuel, which is the wax, which is a compound that is a long chain of CH2 groups, that's one carbon and two hydrogen. Wax melts to make a liquid and the liquid then is drawn up along the wick which is just a simple piece of, um, like a piece of string and then it burns. And there's an awful lot of energy stored in the molecules of wax. There's much more energy in a molecule of wax than there is in a molecule of TNT. When the wax burns, you can imagine that there's this material burning with oxygen outside here and in the middle of the flame there isn't so much oxygen because it has to get into the middle. And so the colour of the flame actually comes from very hot particles of carbon. You can see this quite easily if you take a spoon and put it in the flame of a candle, just like this. You can see then, you get a very nice coating of here of the black carbon uh, <coughs> particles. You're seeing light for just the same reason that if you heat up a piece of wire, as it gets hotter and hotter, the vibrations of the atoms give out light. And so it's just because the particles of carbon are literally red hot. Now, there are two other things which are really quite exciting about the candle. One is that because the wick is right in the middle of the flame, it's kept away from the oxygen. And in the old days, the wick grew longer and longer and longer, and candles got <coughs> more, more and more smoke from them. So now what happens is that there's a very clever piece of design that the candle wick is made so that it is rather like a sheet of paper, and as it gets longer, the end bends over. So you can see over here that the candle wick has bent right over so the end of it is right at the edge of the flame. And so as it is at the edge of the flame, it just burns off. So as the flame candle goes down, it automatically trims the end of its candle. Oh, that's quite interesting. So, so in the 18th century before this was invented, people had special scissors and every time, every few <clears throat> minutes, perhaps every quarter of an hour, you had to trim your candle to stop it smoking, but now it does it automatically. Now the other thing which is quite exciting about candles is what happens when you make them go out. So when I blow it out, look carefully and you'll see what looks like smoke. So this actually isn't smoke, but it is tiny particles of wax which, because the vapour of the wax is suddenly getting colder, it solidifies and you get these tiny, tiny particles, much smaller than a millionth of a metre, formed. So now I'm going to try and do it again, but this time, when the wax is streaming up, I'm going to show you its wax by lighting it with a match. So, are you ready? Watch carefully. So as I held them, I was holding the match about here, and you can see that the, flame, the um, wick is here, and so the flame jumped all that distance to start lighting the candle again. And it made that jump because it went down the stream of wax that was floating up from the wick. And of course the wick was still hot because it's been burning, so once it got to the wick it didn't need very much heat to start it off. Very good, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Fine.